stay off. I'm wondering, the high school kids? I think so. I think so. That's probably why. Uh, all right. Um, we were making our prototype, and we were almost done with our first pass of our prototype, if I recall correctly. Let me download it and verify where we were and finish it up. We are right around the halfway mark of the semester, by the way. Um, I had a question about um, the for the uh, Yes. Yes. Um, it is. Okay. Uh, it is here. It is. Um, if you go under modules and if you scroll all the way to the bottom, semester project. There's the printouts, the overview, and the rubric, instructions and rubric. Okay. So we were most of the way done with prototype one. Let's verify where we were with it. We had our, our, our procedure was to create a template, an HTML template, and a CSS file that goes with it. Make sure that we had the common code correct. In other words, if we look at this, this is what I mean by common code. The header is going to be the same on every page. The navigation is going to be the same on every page. The footer is going to be the same on every page. What's going to be different is this area right here. That's sort of the blank that we fill in. In other words, another way to say this is to develop 10 web pages, it doesn't take 10 times the amount to do one page, right? It takes a certain amount of time to develop the first page, and then you can sort of clone those. And we want to make sure that the common areas are pretty well complete before we start cloning them. Because once we start copying over this code and creating multiple pages, then we have more to go back and change if we ever decide that we want to change something in the common content. The um, CSS we're less concerned about because we already have that all in one place. And if we need to change something, if we say something like, well, let's have a bigger border, we can do that very easily just by saying, OK, let's make the border bigger on the header. And there we go. The border's bigger. And it will be bigger on every page that we copy. So we're going to do a couple last touch-ups to this, and then we're going to, we're going to clone this. Um, the one thing that we're going to do is we are going to um, make the link be oriented horizontally. Make the links be oriented horizontally. So I can do that with a couple of things in the CSS. This section of the, the course is going to be very CSS intensive because we're going to be changing the layout and the appearance of the page quite a bit. And as we know, that falls under the category of CSS. So nav ul, whoops. what that means is any ul within the navigation section 
I want to have a list style type of none. In other words, I don't want any bullet points on it. So we can do that. Finally, I'm going to say nav li, so any li within that section, I'm going to make a display be inline block. Inline block, what that says is essentially treat it like an inline, but let you style some of the properties of a block of a, that you can with block tags. For example, an inline tag margins with, there's a few properties, and I don't remember them all off the top of my head, that you can't set on an inline tag, but you can set on a block tag. So essentially it's going to be an inline tag that has some of the features of a block tag. So if we do this now, our page looks like this. All right, and it would be nice to have everything all on one line. So I'm going to make the font size a little bit smaller. And I'm going to say nav a font size 0.8m. M is a way of saying emphasis. 0.8m means 80% of the normal size of the text. Normal text is considered to be 1M, so 0.8. And now the navigation goes all the way to, uh, across there. Now again, we might want a little bit of space between these. So I can say margin right 5 pixels. That puts a little bit of space in between them. Now if it gets small, it's not going to cut off any of the data, but the navigation might wrap around like that. And you sort of have to decide if that's okay or not. Now if you notice, the one thing I don't like is if you make it so small that Lorraine County Community College sort of leaks out of that box. The reason for that is we made the width of these things 60%, all right? But we've also put a minimum width on these, which is very useful to do. But the minimum width is still a little too small. Let's figure out what maybe we want to make the minimum width be. And I would guess to say I want to make the minimum width about the width of the image. So let's see how big, how big the image is. It is 362 pixels. So maybe instead of making the minimum width uh, 300 pixels, we'll make it 400 pixels. And we're going to put the border back to 5 pixels on this. And that's how we look. If we make it smaller, it'll get smaller up to a certain point, but it won't get any smaller than that. All right. Not defined differently, but a 400 pixel, 400 pixel uh, uh, screen on a flip phone might be smaller than a 400 pixel screen on a on a monitor. All right. There's a lot of things that come into play. Um, there's the the density of the pixels on the screen. You know how close together they are to to make that. Um, I think I just answered my own. Yeah. Good. All right, cool. So 
we'll call this a day on this one. All right, so we made our template. We're going to make a couple of prototype pages. So like for your assignment, you have to make three prototype pages. So we'll make a prototype page for the home, for web development, and for contacts. Okay, so for the home, let's get a nice picture of Lorain County Community College's campus. So let me pull up an image of Lorain Community College's campus. Sure, I have one somewhere here. All right. So I got a picture. This is actually the University Partnership Campus. So I'm going to go and I'm going to put it in here. And it's a pretty big image, so I'm going to make a smaller version of it. But first, I'm going to make a backup copy of it. Just so that if I decide I don't like it, I'm going to. Uh, I can, I can just go back to the original. Uh, I'm going to make it um, 400 pixels wide, because why not? Um, let's see. Resize. You can either do percentages or pixels. I'm going to pick pixels. And horizontal, I'm going to make 400. And that also changes the vertical to 400. And I'm going to save it. And my home page, I'm going to copy this, the template, paste. If you remember the template, um, we called the home page index.html, which is a good name for a home page. So I'm going to make my first copy of this and rename it to index.html. I'm going to edit that, and I'm going to put in that image. All right, 
that's how you spell North Ridgeville. Really? Yeah. And if we go and look at it, there's our page. Can I put it centered? I certainly can. Let's go in and do that. Now, one thing we're going to go over a lot when we do this, and we've already started, but like I said, this is going to be very intensive with CSS. So the one thing you notice is how I'm using different selectors. In other words, for some things I just have the HTML tag. For some selectors I have this, header space H1. What that means is any headers within H1 tags. All right, so that's another way of doing a selector. Um, there's several ways that you can select the items on the page and CSS all works the same. This defines what on the page gets the style rule and then this is the style rule. It's the list of attributes. So I'm going to go and I'm going to say anything, I'm going to give this a class. So I don't know if I want to say that every section uh, every section I want uh, the images centered on every section on the site. I don't necessarily want every image, but I want this specific one to be image, to be centered. And I might want some other ones too. So I'm going to say that, I'm going to give this a class of major images, so like the important images. I don't know, maybe major is a bad word, but we'll stick with that. So like the important images I want to do. So I'm going to go in here and notice I gave it a class of major. A class is one of the other things you can use to define a style. So I can say dot major Um, what do I want to say? Um, display inline block or actually I could I could do this probably a bunch of ways. Inline block margin. PX auto. And that ought to center it. Yeah, you're right. Well, that didn't work. Did I spell everything wrong? Display inline margin, margin to PX auto. Let's do this. I don't know. Okay, that didn't work. I didn't have everything saved. So, okay, there we go. So there's our home page, and we could be happy with that. Now, one nice thing is we do have a photograph in here, right? Um, so now the person that we show this to, let's say we were doing this for the marketing department or the CISS department of Lorain Community, could look and say, yeah, I don't like that photograph. It's not really identifiable as Lorain County Community College's campus, even though I know it is. And it's like, oh, okay, well, then we can swap that out. But it's not that big of a deal. In a way, you have, to develop, you have to develop a little bit of a thick skin when you develop a prototype because you put it out there to be criticized, all right, and to get feedback. Um, 
remember, you want to know what your user wants before you go through the trouble of creating the whole thing, right? You can get a good idea of what they want by talking to them and finding out what their goals are and finding out how they want to achieve those goals and so on. But really, a lot of the discovery process comes when you created something very tangible for them to look at and evaluate. I like this. I don't like this. I don't like those fonts. I don't like the blue color. Um, I do like that image. That's, that's interesting because it's a good picture or whatever. All right? So through the whole process of designing this, when you get to the prototype, you're actually putting it out there to be evaluated doesn't have to be finished and you should communicate to your user that it's not finished that anything that you have is negotiable you don't like the way that it looks hey you can we can change it to look this way or that way or the other way all right so let's clone this again and make uh, our web development page and so what I will do is I will go and save that as web. And I can put the stuff that's going to be in there for the web page. And I think we said we were going to have a couple of paragraphs, a couple of sections. One contains list of degrees and certificates. Now I could put in there like certificate one, certificate two, because this is only a prototype. But something like this I might want to get right, because I could easily look up this information and make sure that that way if I forgot one uh, the person could say hey um, hey you forgot uh, you forgot that so I'm gonna put li um, certificate for web design Certificate for Web Development, Associate in CISS for Web Development. And University Partnership. with University of Akron. Yes. Okay. And we could even put that to be sure. Uh, let me rephrase that. Let me, let me give you a more complete answer. In this case, it is for the CISS programs. But no, there are university partnerships for master's degrees, too. So it would be good to indicate that this particular one's a bachelor's degree. All right. Now, I said that we have, would have some other things on this page. And I don't remember everything I said would be on this page. I think I, you know, so I can just make some stuff up now. All right. Uh, maybe um, employment outlook.
Now, we might have someone from Career Services write the employment outlook, right, instead of us, the web developer, because, you know, that requires some research, you know. This requires minimal research, right? You just look up on, you know, it's ask someone, hey, what are the degree programs, and you got them. And that makes the prototype a little more realistic, and, you know, if you forgot one, then they can tell you, hey, you forgot one. The employment outlook, again, um, Maybe someone else is going to write this. So I am temporarily going to replace this with Greek text. A Greek text is OK on a prototype. It certainly is not OK on a final version of the website. But for a prototype, it might be OK. So I'm going to go and copy this paragraph, put it into here. And save it. We'll say that's all we I wanted on the web development page. Finally, I'm going to make a third page for contact so that I have three pages like is required of you for the assignment. Now, I'd, for the assignment, I just picked three based on about the size of the project. All right? I said, well, that size of project, three prototype pages is probably fine. Three isn't a magic number. You would have the prototypes that you thought were necessary. So in my case, the home page is always a good one to prototype, right? Because the home page is sort of your um, window to the rest of the world. That's how the rest of the world, it's, it's probably in most cases the first thing that people are going to see of your site is a home page. And we have two different kinds of content pages. I have one that's related to a particular degree program, whether it be web or mobile or networking or software development. And then I have another one that's just a list of contacts. So if I show you what the web development page looks like, you're going to have a pretty good idea what the networking page looks like. So I don't really need to prototype those two separately. But the contact page looks different. So maybe I would have a short bio of each professor and a picture of them or whatever. So, or maybe I just have a list. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and just show you, you know, just show the person that's going to see this what the contact page is going to look like. And the contact, the way I'm envisioning it, is just going to be something like this. or web and mobile.
All right, so now we go and visit this. We have three prototype pages. There's a home page. Web development shows this. Contact shows this. I could then easily, if I was having a meeting, say, well, mobile software networking, we don't have for that, but it would look pretty much the same, right? And they say, yeah, okay, you know. So you don't have to do a prototype for every page. In fact, that's probably too much work. When you develop a prototype, your, your goal is to balance the effort that you spend with the accuracy. Because uh, you want to give an impression of what you are planning the site to look like, but you don't want to do the whole site first because that's too much work. And you might have people asking you to change it. So when I show this, maybe someone will say, home page. I like that, but maybe let's, let's get a different picture in here. OK, fine. Web development. Well, I don't know about this. I would put the employment outlook at the top. And then I would not just have simply a list of each of these. I would have more detail about each of these. Well, we could pretty well guess that that would be the same thing that they would say if they saw the networking and software development page, right? And then finally, the contacts, maybe they'd say, well, uh, I don't like that at all. I, I want it to be more personal. I don't want it to just be a list of emails. Include their phone number, include their office location, show a photo of them, uh, have a brief biography, and so on, all right? So you present this out there to get feedback, all right, is, is the bottom line. You present the prototype to get feedback. So you want it to be complete enough so that the feedback that you get is, is accurate, right? Um, and reflects how you have visioned the site. So you don't want to just do a very incomplete job with no style sheet, um, no content, so the person has to guess what it's going to look like when it's finished. You want to give them a pretty good idea of what it wants to look like, but you don't have to dot all the T's or, you know, cross, well, cross the T's and dot the I's, all right? Like, for example, here, you can tell them, well, I'm going to have someone in the CISS division write a, an article about that, or I'm going to have someone in career services write an article about that, because I'm a web developer. Those people do career services for a living, all right? Now, the idea is, again, that we want to make sure the common content is as close as we want it to be because we've cloned these. If I go back and I say, well, um, I want to word this differently, right now I have three pages I have to go back and change it on. right? But if I check that before I started cloning the template, I don't only have one place to, to change it. CSS things I'm not so worried about. Right? Because CSS I can change on every page just like that. All right? Simply by going in and making a change to the CSS uh, for um, the page. Another thing I want you to notice is notice that this is an unordered list, and this is an unordered list, but those are styled differently than this, which is also an unordered list. What's the reason for that? The reason for that is the selectors that I've used. I only did that stuff to unordered lists in the navigation section. So I can refine in the section, <clears throat> all right? When we first studied CSS, we looked at doing just tags. So I could make the footer look a certain way, the header look a certain way. Um, then we moved to saying, well, um, OK, tags are good, but we can use combination of tags, like any link inside of a navigation is going to look a certain way. It's going to have a margin, and it's going to have a certain font size. We also went into class, where we said we can define a class, and we can set things on that page, or any page, to be members of that class, and they'll get a different treatment still. And in this case, we did that with the image, the paragraph for the image uh, on our home page. So these are all different ways that we can point to something on the screen and say, I want this styled this way. So we've learned a couple of things. We've learned HTML tags, we've learned combination of HTML tags, and we learned classes. There's several more besides this, but three is a good one to start with, um, and we'll go from there.
All right. Questions about this? In the file name for class, uh -huh. could we have used the word center, or are there certain reserved words we should not use? You could, but it's not a good idea to. Okay. And, and here's why it's a good idea. It's not, I don't, I don't think it's what you're thinking. It's a good idea because you want the class to represent why you're treating it differently. All right? We know we want that whole, we want that picture centered. Do we know for all times that we will always want that centered? No. We might change that. So we instead of giving physical properties of how it wants to look, we sort of give logical properties of what the role of this picture is. Why do we want to treat this picture differently? And it's because, well, it's a major picture on the page. It, it's, it's, a main, it's, it's the main picture on the home page. It's a major picture. So maybe we could call it major or main or home page or something like that. But that describes why we want to treat it differently, not how we're going to treat it differently. All right? But just in case you have like two or more uh, images too, right? You're just using yes. One. And again, that's, one that's why we put a class on it. Exactly. Um, I'll give you an example. Let's say we had, let's say we we're doing a, we're a prescription drug company and we have warnings, all right, uh, on our page. You know, you always see the side effect warnings and all those horrible things, like, about that. Now, maybe we want the warnings to be red, all right? So we call our class red, all right? Then someone comes along and says, you know what? Instead of red, let's, let's keep the font as black, but let's make it bold and in italics. If your class was red, that would look really weird when you're reading your code. That here's a paragraph whose class is red, but when I read it, it's not red. It's bold and in italics. That would be very confusing to go back and maintain. So instead, I would give it a conceptual name. Like, why do I want to treat this paragraph of text differently? Well, because it's a, it's a warning, right? And I want to make sure someone see it. Okay, then I'd give the classes warning instead of red. I could I can represent a warning a bunch of different ways, right? I could rep I could put a border around a big red border around it. I could put a yellow border around it. I could put the background be yellow and a red border. You know, there's a million different ways I could represent that something was a warning and therefore emphasize it. Warning is the reason why I'm doing it, so that's what I define the class as. Okay. I think we're about ready to call it, uh, call this first prototype done. So we're going to make a bunch more prototypes, though. So um, we're not done completely with prototypes. We're done with this specific prototype. Now that we made our web pages, I could get rid of this template if I wanted to, right? Because it was just used to create these pages. But I'll keep it around just in case we need it, all right? This has a certain kind of layout. Notice that this layout, we got the first thing, the header. We have the second thing, the navigation. We have the third thing, which is the um, section. And then finally, we have the fourth thing, which is the footer. They just go right on top of each other like a stack of blocks, right? This is often called, you know, these are all block tags. Right? So this looks like a stack of blocks. That's why they call them block tags, that, that they get arranged just stacked on top of each other. First block on top of the second block, on top of the third, on top of the fourth. All right. This kind of layout is called the flow layout, F-L-O-W, the flow layout, which simply says we're going to take the first thing on the page, put it on the top, second thing underneath it, third thing underneath it, fourth thing underneath it. And you can make a lot of really good web pages this way, especially if they're smaller web pages. All right? This flow layout works good like as far as taking it to a mobile device. If we went and viewed this in a mobile website, which we can emulate through Google Chrome. This is what this would look like on different devices.
doesn't look bad. There's probably some things we could there's something some things we could easily do to make it better. But right even right now it doesn't look that bad, right? But sometimes we have a more intricate layout that we want. We don't simply want to lay things down. This is like a very basic straightforward simple layout. And you know what? My bias is for basic simple sort of things, right? So I'm not criti when I say it's basic and it's simple, I'm not criticizing it, right? I'm simply saying that this isn't a very intricate layout. Can I ask you to back up for just a sure. second? I missed how you got to oh, how I, in Google. Yes. How you got to showing the different types of things that you could do. Yeah. Can you just walk us through that? Because I yeah. think that would be helpful. Sure. Yeah, that's a good thing to review. Um, when you, when you click on the, the little thing over here okay. on the More Tools, okay. Developers Tools. You then click this thing, which says Toggle Device Toolbar. Okay. If I do that, then I can choose the okay. different devices from the drop-down. Yeah. That's nice because, you know, one of the things that we're going to talk about later on is that <coughs> <coughs> one of our goals is to make the website look good across platforms. So we want to make it look good, not just on a desktop computer or a laptop computer, but on mobile devices as well. So um, who has an iPhone and a Galaxy and a Samsung? You know, I, you don't know. You know, you don't have all those things, and it would be expensive for someone to obtain them. So there's ways to emulate those, and that, that's a simple, straightforward way to emulate. That. So you can see, you can get an idea of what it's going to look like. Now again, it's an emulator, so there's a possibility that the way it renders it isn't going to be perfect, but it's better than just guessing how it's going to look. All right, so we're going to make our second prototype. All right, and again, our second prototype is going to take a lot less time than the first prototype did, simply because we work through a lot of things with that, and we're going to go and. Um, you know, we're, we're going we're gonna to be able to come up with a prototype fairly quickly. It's a good idea to have multiple prototypes because, A, it doesn't take that much time, right? All I have to change is the CSS file in this case, more than likely. There's a possibility for some of our prototypes I might have to make an HTML change. But if we've done a really good job, we don't have to make too many HTML changes, all right? So, I'm going to make a prototype to match this wireframe. If you remember, our basic wireframe looked like this. The one that we did looked like this. Head section footer. All right. So that's what we did in our first prototype. This next type, we're going to make look like this. You have the header go across the whole screen. We're going to have be oriented vertically and be like this. We're going to have over here and then find our footer over here. Okay, so that's the wireframe that we're going to shoot for in our second prototype. All right, and again, it's good to do this because we're going to see that the first prototype took us how long to do? A class and a half maybe? I don't know. This prototype will probably take us half a class to do. So I don't know if we'll start it today or not, but um, we'll, we'll definitely uh, get it done next time. All right, now... If you notice that this is the flow model, right? These things simply go first one, second thing, third thing, fourth thing. We sort of want that to be different in this case. First thing, second thing, third thing, fourth thing. So we have to get these things out of the flow. We have to tell them not to be in the flow, but we're going to take control over where they're going to appear. All right? The way your page looks depends on two things. It depends on the browser defaults, and it depends on any CSS code that you write. We didn't say anything about where we wanted this stuff to appear. There are 
default of these things appearing in the flow kicked in. All right? So that's why they appeared the way they did. We didn't say, hey, I want this to be over here and that over there. We just, we gave some properties, but we didn't say anything about the location of those things on the screen. So they followed just the normal flow. In this case, though, we're going to deviate from that flow. And we're going to use positioning to put things on certain points of the screen. We also might do something like put a background image just to show a difference between this, these two. So I might put a back uh, image behind uh, that. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clone this whole folder. Call it prototype two. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of all my CSS. You could. Yeah, you could. The, well, it, it depends what your goals are, right? My goal is to teach you and take you through the step-by-step -step process. So I want to start with a clean slate. All right? So now, if we look at the second prototype, our page looks like this. Web development looks like this. Contacts looks like this. All right? So, how are we going to get things the way that we want them? Well, we're going to use, in our first example, a position called position absolute. Position absolute is where we go in and we define exactly on the screen where we want each of these elements to, to uh, appear. So, I'm going to do one. I used to love the TV show Alias, right? And Alias, every week, there'd be the show... And right before the end of the show, the main character was in a cliffhanger. Or you never knew, like, you know, is she going to be discovered as a spy? Or are they going to shoot her or whatever? All right? And that made you come back next time, right? Because you had to see what happens. So I'm going to try to do the same thing here. I'm going to start this example. But I'm going to leave it hanging so you have to come back Wednesday to see how it finishes. <laughs> I'm going to put the header, and I'm going to say the position is absolute. I'm going to say the top of this element is 20 pixels. The left is... Actually, I'm going to do 50 pixels, 50 pixels. Pixels are the actual little dots on the screen. You know, a screen, if you look real close, if you get a magnifying glass, it's composed of little dots. So 50 PX is the actual dots, whereas percentages is per percent of the available space. The whole of the whole entire, well, the available space. In the case of something like this, it would be the whole screen, but sometimes it can be a portion of the screen. So I go and I put my style rule for the header in. And... Oh no, our hero is in trouble because this is what we get. All right? If we notice, oh, no, I think it looks you think it looks perfect? Okay, we're done then. <laughs> no class Wednesday. No, 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 no. If we notice, it's 50 from the top, 50 from the left, just like we promised, but this is in a horrible mess. All right? So we'll leave this as a cliffhanger next time on how we're going to fix that and why it happened that way, and how we're going to fix it. All right. Uh, I will gather all the, all the files that I need here and post them to Canvas, and then I'll be upstairs to unlock the door. So we'll see you up in lab. By the way, it's great to see so many people here. When the class started, there was like half the people here that are here now. So I guess, I guess we ended strong, so that's good. That's good. I hope you have a great rest of the day. Uh, we'll see you upstairs for lab, and we'll see you on Wednesday.